Hi everybody, it's Holly Signorelli talking about the tax effect of real estate investing. So a lot of people are doing real estate investing. I mean, it's the, the market is killing it. People are making a lot of money. They're doing flips. So let's talk about several different things. One is when you flip a property and it's um, in less than a year, which a lot of flips are, you're gonna be paying ordinary tax rates. You're not gonna get those preferential rates. Um, to get the better rates, you actually have to hold on to something for a full year. And then it goes into a whole nother category, just kind of like stocks and bonds. And then there's um, you know a lower tax that you have to pay, like in 15 and maybe, maybe 20, and and in some cases like 24 or 25%, but you don't have to pay those high brackets for that. But the truth is if you're flipping properties, then you're probably not gonna hang on to it for a long time because what you're trying to do is a really simple remodel and then sell it. So I've seen it both ways where people have bought properties in low, low times when the market was bad. So they took advantage of that and then they hung on to it for a while or even even made it a rental and then flipped it. And so then those kind of situations, I do see people having the long-term capital gains, which is better. Another really important thing that a lot of people really don't know, because this question comes up to me all the time is, people think that when they sell a property and then they take the full gains and put it into another property, that they don't have to pay tax on the original one. But that is not the case. When you sell a property, you have to pay tax on that before you go to buy your other property or you're gonna get to the end of the year and you're gonna owe way more tax than you think you should. So that's just a really important thing to understand if you are putting that money into another flip, okay? Now, a lot of people know what the 1031 exchange is, but we'll go ahead and cover that and I'll try to make it fairly simple for you. But let's say that you sold a flip or a rental property or whatever the situation was and you do want to roll it over into something else. Well, 1031 is usually through a like an attorney or somebody who is really licensed to do that. And basically when you sell the first company, or I'm sorry, the first um, property, then you take the money and you give it over to this attorney to put into like an, an escrow account. And then you have a certain amount of time to decide what new property that you're going to get and you do have to buy it within six months. Now, there are some complicated other ways to do it, but let's kind of keep this simple. So then, so you've got this money that can't goes over here to the attorney or whoever it is that's handling the 1031 exchange, and then they take that money and then they put it into the next property, which is still yours. And so because it hasn't touched you, you haven't touched the money, then there is no tax. It goes over into the other property. But at some point, you are still going to have to pay tax on that. So you need to you know, keep that in mind as well. So the other thing is, if you are one of those people that does real estate for a living, you don't have another job, that's where you get your income, then the IRS is a little bit vague about this, but if you do enough of them, um, you know, maybe you, you've done like 10 or 15 a year, there's not an exact number, but especially if that's what you do for a living, then that will no longer be in that capital gain category. It'll actually be ordinary income as if you were just running a business because that's the way that they look at it. So then your tax return would look very different. It would look like anyone else's that you have income and expenses and then you're paying tax and even social security. And as of right now, the the new tax reform for 2018 uh, as of today when I'm recording is pretty much done, but it still has one more vote to go in. And it is possible that there may be some social security tax on those kind of things. So I will keep you updated on that, but I wanted you to really understand how real estate investors do get taxed so you don't get a surprise at the end of the day.